Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the Frank Starling Law of the Heart. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing the structure of a cardiac muscle cell so that we can then discuss uh, how the Frank Starling Law of the Heart, which is basically that if you stretch a cardiac muscle cell out, the force with which it will contract is greater. Okay, or at least if you stretch the wall of the left ventricle, the force with which the left ventricle will contract is going to be greater. Right, so, uh, what's going to happen then? Well, uh, we need to finish our discussion of the structure of a cardiac muscle cell. Right, so, we've drawn one sarcomere within this cardiac muscle cell. What we now need to do is uh, draw a few more, because you don't just have one. What instead you have is you have sarcomeres in rows. So you'll have another sarcomere here, and another sarcomere here. So let's draw these on. Okay, so here, this Z disc that was part of this sarcomere here, it will also be part of the next sarcomere along. So it will have actin filaments going uh, attached to both sides of this said disc. So this here is the bigger picture of this said disc. So it will also have actin filaments attached to this side, basically, projecting off in this direction. Right. And this next said disc over here will also have actin filaments attached to it. So let me color these in. So these two things here are also said discs. Okay. And I might as well put some more actin filaments over here as well so that I can only so that I only need to use the highlighter once. Okay, so again, this Z disc on this side, again, will be part of the next sarcomere along. So there'll be actin filaments attached to the other side of this Z disc over here. And uh, here's the next uh, Z disc along, which will be part of this next sarcomere. So let's color in these actin filaments in this bright green color here. Okay, and then suspended between these two Z discs with their actin filaments projecting towards one another, you'll then have M discs. So here are some more M discs. Okay, like so. And off those M discs, you will have these myosin filaments, so you've got more sarcomeres, basically. Now, what will happen is, even though in this picture I've only drawn three sarcomeres and the way I've drawn it, it looks like that would fill up the cardiomyocyte. In reality, you'll have loads of the things. You'll have rows that will consist of hundreds and hundreds of sarcomeres after one another. So you'll have these massive great rows of sarcomeres. And at either end, the sarcomeres will attach onto the cell membranes. So the sarcomeres that are right at the end of the cell will then attach onto the cell membrane. So, basically, when this row of sarcomeres contracts, Every single one is going to contract, okay? And uh, that's going to mean that the whole row contracts hugely, and that's going to pull the two sides of the membrane closer together, meaning that the whole cell is going to contract. Furthermore, you don't just have one row of sarcomeres. Instead, what you'll have is another row of sarcomeres just below here. So you'll have another row of sarcomeres like this. Okay, so here are the Z discs again, and they'll have their actin filaments stretching out like so, okay, and I won't completely draw this out, but in fact I'll draw it out, but I won't put the colour on to save time. So then you'll have these M discs again, like so, with their myosin, overlapping with the actin filaments at least supposedly, even though in my picture it's going slightly wrong, and basically you've got multiple of these rows of sarcomeres. And also, an important point that you can see is that they're oriented. The position of this lower row is basically in phase with the position of the upper row. So where the Z discs are in the upper row, the Z discs are in the lower row. And where the actin is in the upper row, the actin is in the lower row, etc. That's what I mean by in phase. Now, it's not quite as perfect as this in cardiac muscle cells. This is what skeletal muscle looks like. It's absolutely perfectly in phase in skeletal muscle cells. In cardiac muscle, it's a bit more messy, but it's nearly in phase. And this is what produces this striated appearance of the cardiac muscle cells. So basically, the myosin filaments, these blue filaments, they are... 
um, bigger, they're thicker fat filaments, whereas the actin filaments are very thin. So where the myosin filaments are, you get these dark appearances. So effectively, these bands where you have the myosin filaments, so one here, one here, and one here, these are the dark bands that you see under a light microscope on a cardiac muscle cell. So these are the A bands, okay, the anisotropic bands. And then where the myosin isn't, i.e. these gaps in between down here, those are the I bands, those are the lighter bands, the isotropic bands. So let me draw one of those. So this here, this would be an I band, an isotropic band. So that's what's responsible for the striated appearance of cardiac muscle cells. Right, so now let's discuss how um, Starling's, the Frank Starling law of the heart works. How, when we stretch the wall of the left ventricle, are we going to get a greater force of contraction? Right, so to understand this, we need to look at the sarcomere. Now, what, basically, let's think about what the optimal length or for this sarcomere to be is if we are trying to develop force, okay? So, where is the force generated by these sarcomeres? Well, basically, it's, it's generated by the myosin filaments pulling on the actin filaments. That's where the force is. Now, if you uh, have this sarcomere really, really small length, okay? So, imagine this sarcomere is now a really small length. In fact, I'll draw this. Let's go over the page and draw it. We're now talking about the optimal length for a sarcomere to be. Now, if the sarcomere is too small, so let's draw our sarcomere here. If the sarcomere's length isn't that good, so here is our Z discs with their actin. Here's the M disc down the middle. Now, if this sarcomere is too, isn't stretched out enough, basically, then will it be able to contract when it gets the signal? Well, the answer is no, basically. It won't be able to contract um, when it gets the signal because all of these um, myosin filaments are already right up against the Z discs over here. So these are the Z discs. And basically, this sarcomere is absolutely useless to the cardiac muscle cell um, if it's already in this um, sort of position because it just can't generate any force because the myosin filaments cannot pull the actin filaments anymore because they're all it's already fully contracted basically so this is not a good length to have a sarcomere you will not get any force you will not get any work from this sarcomere in this pre-contracted state basically so that is not a good length for the sarcomere to be on the other hand let's go to the other extreme so the other extreme is that the sarcomere is too long. Okay, so if the sarcomere has been stretched out too long, then what's going to happen? Well, basically, the myosin filaments are no longer going to overlap with the actin filaments. So again, this is useless. If you stimulate this sarcomere uh, to um, contract, uh, then it's not going to be able to contract because the myosin filaments can't interact with the actin filaments. So here are the actin filaments in green, uh, then the myosin filaments are in blue, okay, and we can see that the myosin filaments are not in a position where they actually overlap with the actin filaments because you've stretched this sarcomere out too much, uh, which means that you can't get any force being produced by this sarcomere. Even if you stimulate it to contract, you're not going to get any force out of it because if the force is produced by the myosin interacting with the actin. So this isn't good either. So basically, there is an optimal position in the middle of these two. Okay, what you want is you want the uh, myosin filaments to overlap with the actin filaments somewhat, but you don't want them to overlap so much that there is no room for them to pull, basically. So what you want is the Goldilocks zone in between, like so. So you want some overlap, but you want room for uh, contraction. You want a contraction actual distance. Okay, so this is why um, stretching a cardiomyocyte increases its um, 
the force with which it will contract, at least to a point. Okay? So the thought is that basically, when you've got the cardiomyocyte that is unstretched, okay, some of the sarcomeres will be in this completely contracted state, okay? And therefore, when you stimulate the cardiomyocyte to contract, then uh, these sarcomeres, which are completely pre-contracted, aren't actually going to be able to produce any force. So basically, inside your cardiomyocyte, which, remember, has absolutely loads of these sarcomeres, inside that cardiomyocyte, some of them will be in this form, is the uh, theory as to how the Frank Starling mechanism works. So, those won't be producing any force. So in the unstretched cardiomyocyte, you have some sarcomeres in this form which aren't producing any force when you contract them. Then the thought is that when you stretch the cardiomyocyte, you take them from being in this state, these sarcomeres that are in this state, to being in this state. So you make sure that more of the sarcomeres in the cardiomyocyte are uh, at this optimal overlap between the myosin filaments and the actin filaments. Therefore, when the cardiomyocyte contracts, the amount of sarcomeres that will be able to generate force is going to be greater, so you'll get a greater force of contraction from that cardiomyocyte. That is believed to be how the frank starling mechanism works. Now, you will notice that if the stretch becomes too great, it will actually start pulling some of the sarcomeres that were in this sort of position originally into this, and then you'll get a reduction in the contractility. So basically, the idea is this, that we can draw a graph, basically, of stretch versus uh, force that you actually get out of the muscle cell when you stimulate it. And you'll get a graph that looks like this. Okay, So at the low stretch, you'll have a bunch of sarcomeres which are in this position and therefore are not operating. Then as the stretch goes up to this optimal stretch here, okay, what will happen is that these sarcomeres which were in the cardiomyocyte, which were in this state where they were incapable of actually producing any force, will be stretched out into this state. And now, those additional sarcomeres will be able to add their contribution to the original sarcomeres which were in this state. So you'll have more sarcomeres in this state, and therefore, those are the sarcomeres that can actually produce a contraction. So you've got a greater number of sarcomeres that will produce a force, and therefore, the force that you're going to get out of your entire cardiomyocyte will be greater. Then, as you continue to stretch it up, what will happen is that you'll pass this point. Some of the sarcomeres that were originally in this form will now go into this form, and they'll stop producing force. So the number of sarcomeres in the cardiomyocyte capable of producing force will go down, and that means that the force that the um, cardiac muscle cell will contract with will be reduced. So basically, the idea is that at the normal end diastolic volume, maybe you're operating at this sort of level here. Okay, so the normal end diastolic volume of the left ventricle will stretch all the cardiomyocytes maybe to this amount here, to this level here. So let's say this is the normal end diastolic volume stretch. Okay, and then when you increase the end diastolic volume, you increase the stretch on the cardiac. Uh, muscle cells, and you go up this graph, and you therefore uh, get closer to this optimal level of stretch, and therefore the force of each cardiomyocyte is going to be greater, therefore the overall force produced by the left ventricle wall will be greater, and that will provide this extra energy that you need to expel a greater volume of blood into the aorta, increasing the stroke volume. So that is the stank, uh, sorry, the Frank, not stank, the Frank Starling Law of the Heart. Okay.